I think the vast majority of Christians are living under condemnation because let's face it, that's what the world does. People are always guilting you into doing this and guilting you into doing that. And even your own heart will do that. Hi, welcome to another Capra Convo. So good to be with you. Again, my guest, Chris, where are you from, brother? Greenville, Ohio. I don't know if you've been there, but you need to go there sometime to go to Chris's church. Chris, we've been friends for a while, been involved with Andrew Womack Ministries, which we're on the campus of right now. And we got to go to Africa together, yes. man. Yes, that was amazing. <laughs> we got too close to those hippos. <laughs> <laughs> My wife couldn't handle it. I get to go on some of these trips where she can't tell me, stop going near those animals. <laughs> you know, this uh, afternoon, wherever you're watching this, what time of the day is, there was something that got to my heart, and it was called Condemnation Free. And Chris, you've been in the ministry for a while. Are most Christians living under condemnation? I think the vast majority of Christians are living under condemnation because let's face it, that's what the world does. People are always guilting you into doing this and guilting you into doing that. And even your own heart will do that. And, and I think, I, honestly, I think that's sometimes why it's hard for pastors like yourself or me to share uh, uh, kind of come up higher messages or convicting messages because when people have condemnation filters on their heart, they hear it as condemnation yes. and like you encourage people you need to pray or study your bible or whatever they're saying wow i'm not praying enough and god's <laughs> mad at me and that's god's not doing that at all because our praying or our bible study doesn't merit any right standing with god that was all by by the work of jesus totally. at the cross totally. totally and 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 that's why your heart has to repent from dead works and that's all very good yeah so it starts out chapter eight. Mm -hmm. There is now, therefore, no condemnation, not even a little bit, as it describes, to those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, we read that, but we've almost got to go back to chapter seven, right. because we've got the frustration of Paul, <laughs> who is frustrated by the law, trying to live under yeah. it. What would you comment about Paul? Well, well, I believe Paul, as a Jewish man, he received the law and he was not able to keep it. Right. And, and that the goal of the law uh, was to show us that we needed a savior. You know, and, and, and it's interesting. You talked about there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. And I think of condemnation like a building, like if they condemn this building, what they're saying is it's no longer fit for that's you. That's right. And that's what the enemy with his lies tries to do to you and I and say, oh, you, you're not of any use to God. God's not interested in you. You're not whatever. I tell people all the time, I said, if, if I could live the Christian life, I wouldn't need Jesus. <laughs> Jesus removed that condemnation by taking my sin at the cross. And then he turned around and gave me his right standing. Completely. So when we look at this and then we go back to Paul who was trying to do this in his own strength, trying to look at the law to be righteous, he came to the point that no man can be righteous in his own strength. Right. And so when we look at this verse, there is thou therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And, and I even, you tell me your comment on us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. I've heard that's not in there by a lot of translators. Yeah. So it's, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, period. Yes. Have you heard that? Absolutely. The New American Standard and others based upon what manuscripts they drew from. But but the end of that verse, I don't look at it like a legalistic thing. Those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I believe there's no condemnation when I don't walk after my own strength, my flesh, but I walk by what's true according to the spirit. There's no condemnation. Yeah. So, I mean, you can apply that, too. So it doesn't really contradict unless you have legalistic filters on your heart. Okay, so let's look at this for a second. How do we walk according to the flesh and how do we walk according to the spirit? Well, walking according to the flesh has to do with trying to merit your righteousness or walking in your own strength. The, uh, uh, the, Paul said this in Romans seven eighteen. I know that in me that's in my flesh or my own ability dwells no good thing for to will is present, I wanna do right, but how to accomplish that, I don't find that in my own that's strength. Right. And so the law was given to bring us to the end of ourselves so we would quit trusting in our own merit. Romans 10, 4 says, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to all those who believe. 
and and so and, and the law's not sin. The law's good, and and in fact, uh, I, I believe in a righteous, holy lifestyle. It's just how you get there that's different. If you could get there in your own strength, you wouldn't need Jesus. You'd just do it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth of this. Uh, of course, you know, Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Yeah. Who can deliver me from this body of death? Right. And so most people see sin in them and they can't get free of it. Right. But then we come into chapter 8. Yeah. And this gives us the answer to this. Yeah. And, you know, for the law of the spirit of life yeah. in Christ Jesus. What is the law of the spirit of life to you? I Chris? believe it's the new nature. I, 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 for example, if you, the Bible, we're not lawless. We talk about that. The, the law has been, the Ten Commandments, God didn't do away with them. He just relocated them. They're in your heart now. And, 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 and if you read in James chapter 1, verse 25, it says, But whoso looks into the complete or perfect law of liberty, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. That work is looking into the perfect law of liberty, looking into the word of God and seeing yourself in Christ. And, and, and if he's not doesn't forget that, that man's going to be blessed in his deed. In other words, it's going to translate into fruit in my life. Right. And, and that's, that's you know, we're, like I said, we're not lawless. He's relocated and we're, we're new creations. And we should be having fruit in our life as we know the righteousness. So the law of the spirit versus the law of sin and death. Yes. The law of sin and death is what the whole Old Testament was trying to live right. under, to be righteous. And how many... How many made it under the old covenant? Right. Well, <laughs> e even under the old covenant, it was faith. Because it, it talks in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, about how the gospel was preached unto them. And I asked people, how was the gospel preached unto those in the old covenant? But it said it didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith. In other words, but how was it preached? When If it's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It was preached in type and shadow. So even under the old covenant, it was still faith. Because they couldn't fulfill the law in their own strength. That's why the animal sacrifices, that blood was shed. That was a type of the blood of Christ. But they had to keep doing it. Because there was always a reminder. You're a sinner. You're a sinner. You know, constant reminder. Probably not too far after they had done their sacrifice. I don't know how many days they started feeling guilty. Yeah. Condemned again. But we're mm. condemned free. Yes. I mean, Jesus took all my sin. He became my yes. sin. He became that sacrifice, and then I no longer am seen as a sinful person. Not at all. The Bible talks about that, that if you're joined unto the Lord, you're one spirit in 1 Corinthians 6, 17. And I want to say something else here in Romans 8. You'll love this. Verse 3 and 4. Watch this. For what the law could not do. The law wasn't bad. In other words, I don't go to a mirror and see ugly and get mad at the mirror. <laughs> the mirror's just revealing what's already there. Come on. Not me, but I mean other people. Just kidding. <laughs> just, just, but my point is you can't blame the mirror for what it reveals. The law merely revealed our condition outside of Christ. The, like Paul said, I would have not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. The commandment came, sin revived, I died. I think, whoa. You know, and he wouldn't have even known it had the law not revealed it. But it said, and this is so good. It says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. The law itself is holy, Romans 7, 12. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Wow. He didn't condemn people. He condemned sin in the flesh. And then verse 4 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, not by us. That's big. In us, not by us. By faith, it's fulfilled in us, not by us who walk not after the flesh, their own strength, but after the spirit. As a born-again child of God, what's true of you in the spirit is that you're a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And walking by or after the spirit has more to do with me trusting in what Jesus did. Yes. So by the spirit, yep. I am now been made righteous. That's exactly right. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, a glass, the glory of the Lord were metamorphosed, were changed from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. So many people go to the Bible and all they see is laws they have to keep and they don't see the life of God there to keep them. And when we <laughs> behold Christ in us, the hope of glory, that's when we change. That's beholding the perfect or complete law of liberty, freedom from having to measure up through my own merit. And that's the one who's blessed in me. Yes. So 
I hope you're getting this message today. We're not called to live by our own strength or ability or under the law. We're called to live by the spirit that we've now been given. Jesus either did it all or he didn't, and he did do it all. And then he gave us his spirit to walk this out. Absolutely. You know, we use the word grace, grace being God's ability that works from the heart that empowers you to do what you can't do in your own strength. That's exactly. I couldn't do this law, but now I got the spirit. And now that I know I'm been forgiven, mm -hmm. I can walk in the spirit and live this out. Yeah. And the Bible says that this is amazing to me. We talk about grace. If you believe as a born again child of God, that you're an old sinner saved by grace, which some people see grace can't work because Romans 5 21 says that just as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness. So if you're not hearing that you're the righteousness of God in Christ, not by your own works, grace has no tracks to run on. Come on, give grace some tracks to run on, Amen. trusting fully and completely in what Jesus did. Amen. Well, if you're out there and you've been one of these people that's been just frustrated day after day, you repent, then you get up and do it again. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Ghost is here for you Amen. to cause you and help you to live this life in the spirit. So, Father, I thank you for these people, Amen. people out there listening that maybe don't know you. I pray right now they'd say, Jesus, Amen. save me, forgive me. God will do it right now. He'll come into your life. He'll fill you with the Holy Spirit, and you will be empowered to start walking a spirit life. Mm. So I thank you for that now in the mighty name of Jesus. Chris, if they want to get a hold of you, i got well, a website. Yeah. Chris got at tlchurch.us. Uh, we're in Greenville, Ohio, True Life Church, and we're also doing a church plant at Live Church in Cincinnati, Alive Cincy, C I N C Y dot com. And uh, you can touch base there through smartwoodsministries.org. And uh, I mean, there's several ways you can, you can connect with us. We love you and we pray for you in Jesus' name. God bless you all. We'll see you again soon.